Ambani's court strikes out eight of 15 charges against Nandi Kanu over terrorism charges. And then PCGMD Melikiari seeks special court for all theft. And President Buhari decries poor financial accountability in Nigeria urges cleanup. Glad to have you join us in the news. I am Mary Kanu. And following revelations by the federal government on the rising rate of crude oil thefts in the Niger Delta, the group managing director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Mele Kiari, has called for the speedy establishment of a special court to try cases of oil theft. Kiari spoke on Thursday when he appeared before the House of Representatives Committee on Petroleum Resources upstream. According to Kiari, the country's oil theft situation has hampered the oil sector's development, which should have been aided by the Petroleum Industry Act. Well, more details in this next report. The menace of oil theft has become a major concern for the federal government and stakeholders in the nation's oil and gas industry. The situation is so bad that the group managing director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Melekiari, has predicted an unprecedented blow on the nation's fortunes if something is not done urgently. While giving details of the revenue loss in the past years, the NNPC GMD said the country's oil theft situation has hampered the oil sector's development, which should have been aided by the Petroleum Industry Act, PIA. That when you lose close to 200,000 barrels per day, even at average prices of $65 to the barrel, we lost close to $4 billion between January and December 2021 in terms of value lost. And in 2022, January to date, the losses have escalated to over 250,000 barrels per day. And at current prices of $100 to the barrel, even within this short period, needless to say, Mr. Chairman, that this is all coming as a result of acts of vandals and, and oil thieves. Mele Kiari assured that in two months' time, the issue will be brought under control as the NNPC is in collaboration with security agencies to arrest the situation. He also called for the cooperation of the National Assembly in establishing an independent special court to try persons found culpable. It's live imprisonment for attack on these facilities. So there are laws to support this. What we need to do is to increase the advocacy so that you know the legal process takes its course. Prosecutions are done timely. If you let me, Mr. Chairman, I would recommend that we set up a special court for this. So that such cases will be speedily dealt with. So that it is not just the ordinary small people that you see at those locations that are prosecuted that we know that to sell crude oil in the international market, it is not the business of the ordinary people that you see in this illegal financial system. It's an elitist business. Members of the committee commended the GMD for his efforts so far, but wanted confirmation that a two-month timeline is feasible. I think you should reconsider the two-month timeline you have put so as not to be shooting yourself in the foot because I know that from what you have put, apart from the control room, there must be monetary mechanisms for those pipelines. From what we have seen here, he's told us the efforts they are making to restore production. And he says within two months, there will be tremendous progress. If in two months we can ramp up our production, we'll start hitting 2 point something million barrels per day as we used to do. Probably just come and just tell us how they have achieved that and there will be no need for too many questions. Nigeria's oil theft situation paints a green picture at a time the nation struggles to meet up with OPEC's production quota. While it is not clear who these oil thieves are, the NNPC GMD has revealed 
that the culprits in the business are the elites in the Nigerian society. Fulashade Ogurindi, TV360 News. Well, joining me to discuss Nigeria's dilemma of oil theft is Bala Zaka, oil and gas expert. Well, thank you for joining us on the news. Now, I'll just ask the question on the mind of every Nigerian who are these oil thieves and uh, why have they not been apprehended by relevant authorities? Uh, first of all, uh, theft is demeaning to an individual. Theft is demeaning to a nation. Stealing is an act of criminality, and stealing is sabotage, whether to an individual, a corporate body, or a national asset, or national investment. So whichever way we look at it, stealing is criminality. So this act of theft, like, like we've always been talking, especially in the context of Nigeria, couldn't have been theft or couldn't have been stealing by, by the ordinary Nigerians. Because you are talking about a country losing about 200,000 barrels of crude oil per day. Those who don't really know what these barrels are may just think we're talking about some, uh, some buckets of crude oil. But by the time you carry out the necessary conversions, you will find out that 200 thousand barrels of crude oil stolen per day is equivalent to about 1,000 tankers of 33,000 liter capacity each being stolen per day. You're talking about a 33,000 liter capacity tanker and having 1,000 of that stolen per day from a country. You from, from that analysis and the volume, it is very clear that it is a well-crafted and a well-syndicated criminality that is beyond the ordinary citizens. So to that extent, that level of sabotage will cripple any individual investment. It will cripple any corporate body's investment. It will even cripple national investment. And to that extent, such criminals should be chased in national interest to their boroughs and be fished out and be dealt with. Well, uh, now this leads to the next question. Now, what loopholes must the government plug uh, to ensure that these old thieves do not inflict further damage on the nation's economy? Uh, already they have inflicted uh, the, the, the damages. Because as I'm speaking to you right now, Nigeria cannot meet up with her uh, daily production quota allocation uh, by, by OPEC, that is Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. Then even her, her production volume to be able to meet up with the 2022 budget and bridge some budget deficit or budget gaps will not be achievable or attainable. So to that extent, Nigeria is already suffering from the calamities. Individual and corporate investors are already suffering from the calamities. The only thing that needs to happen, first of all, is to start by sensitization and give a time frame. But even before doing that, we need to ask questions. Are our control mechanisms not working? Because we are supposed to have preventive control mechanisms. Then you are supposed to have detective control mechanisms and corrective control mechanisms. And let me explain them quickly. Preventive control mechanisms are supposed to prevent the vandals from even getting to where these uh, crude oils are, whether at the wellheads or whether through the pipelines that they intercept. So there are supposed to be surveillance, I mean, equipment. You are supposed to also have physical or individual security agents that will make sure the criminals are even prevented in the first place from getting access to whether the wellheads or the pipelines. Then if they are able to beat the preventive mechanisms, the detective mechanism should be able to check that. And the detective control mechanisms are basically, basically digital mechanisms in the control room. Because when you break through an oil or crude oil or gas pipeline, there is supposed to be what we call pressure drop. 
and that pressure drop is supposed to be detected by sensors in the con I mean in the control room. So that mechanism is supposed to work. But even if they succeed and they cause harm and calamities by damaging the, the pipelines, the corrective control mechanism simply means there should be practitioners in place that will quickly move into action and arrest the situation. But to a given extent, these mechanisms have been failed. But let there be stern warning such that once these criminals are caught, they should be dealt with in national interest and according to the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Well, uh, Bala Zaka, oil and gas expert, thank you for joining us on the news and for your contribution. And the Federal High Court in Abuja has struck out eight of the 15 counts against the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPUB, Namdi Kanu. The 15 charges which bordered on terrorism were filed against Kanu by the federal government. Justice Binta Ayako struck out eight of the charges while delivering a ruling on the validity of the charges. She held that in the instant preliminary objection application, the counts struck out have not disclosed any offence by the defendant. Speaking to journalists at the end of the court seating, counsels to the defence and the prosecution gave details of the defendant's application for bail. The court has already hinted us that arising from the new practice direction, considering the inconvenience this uh, case has always caused other courts within the premises and other offices within the premises, moving forward, this case will be heard in other uh, places that will be communicated to parties before the next adjourn date. This, I thought, is very important. And I thought I should let you know. I'm against the issue of making it look like a secret trial, as if a trial is like a gathering of witches and wizards in a coven. It should be a public trial which the whole world can watch. Then when you come here, you can screen out the people and decide on how many people can attend. The same way it has been, we have been doing it. I believe that because of that, by the grace of God, I'm going to challenge some portions of the new practice directions as being unconstitutional and against so many sections. The Federal High Court has barred journalists and members of the public from attending proceedings in terrorism-related cases. The court's chief information officer, Catherine Christopher, announced the new practice direction in a statement on Thursday. On the new directive, which takes immediate effect, the trial of terrorism-related offences is to henceforth be conducted in camera. The statement further explained that terrorism proceedings will hold at any place to be designated by the chief judge, and in the case of the Abuja Judicial Division, the venue for the time being will be the premises of the Code of Conduct Tribunal. And President Muhammad Buhari has decried a poor culture of accountability in the country and called for a clean-up. President Buhari made this known when he received a delegation from the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, led by the President, come forth a youth tile at the State House in Abuja. Buhari added that professionals in various fields, especially accounting, provide the strength and framework for thriving economies and promised that his administration will continue to engage experts to gain measurable and reliable results. I wish you, uh, I will demand a comprehensive uh, uh, report of your visit so that I can look at it uh, because I very much uh, respect uh, your competence as social stabilizers and uh, for accounting of our resources. And I know through my experience this is what uh, most of us in Nigerians, we don't want to account for the responsibilities given to us. We just like to walk through life like that, which is not possible. In her remarks, the Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, congratulated the President of ICANN and the new management. According to her, ICANN had over many years played a key role in the domestication of some international policies in the country, urging more interest in Finance Act implementation. As a female president in a male-dominated profession, you are an example to our young girls of what can be achieved through hard work and diligence. 
Since your investiture almost a year ago, ICANN, under your leadership, has sought to bring the accounting profession in Nigeria in line with the constantly evolving global environment, and by so doing, give greater recognition to accounting qualifications obtained in Nigeria. I would like to encourage the Institute itself to play a more prominent role in the participatory process employed in the development of the Finance Acts by drawing from your pool of knowledge to contribute position papers in specific tax policy proposals and take a more active role in the public consultations. Fighting terrorism is a big challenge across the world and we commend the efforts being made to stem this tide in our country. As chartered accountants, we acknowledge our role in combating terrorism by the application of the principle of forensic accounting and follow the money to fish out the perpetrators of these illegal activities. Sir, we would continue to avail the country of our technical competencies in forensic audit, working with other security agencies to expose these enemies of progress. And the Nigerian Navy on Thursday played host to officials of the European Union at the first ever joint event on strengthening Nigeria European Union cooperation on maritime security. Speaking of the event, which took place at the Western Naval Command in Lagos, Chief of Naval Staff Vice Admiral Awal Zubai Rugambo mentioned that the event is coming at a time the nation is committed to the sustainable development of her waters. A correspondent, Simi Saladiku, has the details in this next report. The rising cases of piracy attacks on the Gulf of Guinea have become a cause of concern for the Nigerian government. To this end, the Nigerian Navy has initiated a joint Nigerian-European Union collaborative operation against criminals in the nation's maritime sector. At the event, the Chief of Naval Staff, who was represented by Rear Admiral Yakubu Wambai, stressed that a secured maritime environment is a contributing factor to economic prosperity, hence the need for a collaborative effort to tackle the menace. The Nigerian-European Union collaborative effort on maritime security is very germane. Working together is a sine non in the zeal to defend the seas by enhanced maritime security and safety needed to promote international trade, protect the environment, and guarantee use of the sea for legitimate businesses. No doubt, this kind of interaction will further strengthen the bilateral relations between Nigeria and the European Union, and indeed, Italy and Spain, and other Italian nations that I represented here. Also speaking at the event, the Chief of Policy and Plans Naval Headquarters, Rear Admiral Saidu Garba, revealed the successes achieved by the Nigerian Navy. He also commended the European Union for its fundamental support and partnership. Nigeria has a robust and professional Navy with historic tradition. Permit me to use this opportunity to state that the commitment of the Nigerian Navy towards maritime security has yielded dividends. You can count on Nigeria Navy's willingness to always collaborate with international partners on efforts to curb maritime crimes in the Gulf of Guinea. In their remarks, officials of the European Union lauded the various strides by the Nigerian Navy towards maritime security. They promised more support towards strengthening the security of the Gulf of Guinea and boosting bilateral relations between Nigeria and Europe. The European Union share a mutual interest with Nigeria. But at EU level internally, we realized that by coordinating this present, we could be more effective. The Nigerian Navy has shown and shows great foresight in nurturing the vision of multilateral cooperation. Maritime engagements that include navies work together really to improve interoperability and collective capacity. Let me end my remarks by paying a tribute to the Nigerian Navy for ever uh, enhancing the capabilities, the means and the determination 
and for taking the lead in this fight. Following frequent attacks on vessels and kidnapping of seafarers, the Gulf of Guinea was in 2021 described as the world's piracy hotspot, with 43% of all reported piracy incidents occurring in the region. Simisola Adikun, TV360, Lagos. We will take a break here, but still to come, Nigeria at high risk of death, distress, IMF warns. We'll bring you details of the story and more right after this break. Welcome back. Here is a recap of some of our top stories tonight. Following revelations by the federal government on the rising rate of crude oil theft in the Niger Delta region, the Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Mele Kiari, has called for the steady establishment of a special court to try cases of oil theft. According to Kiari, the country's oil theft situation is hampered the oil sector's development, which should have been aided by the Petroleum Industry Act. We also told you that the Federal High Court in Abuja has struck out eight of the 15 counts against the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kanu. The 15 charges which bordered on terrorism were filed against Kanu by the federal government. Well, in case you miss any of our news bulletin or for more updates, to log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and Google Plus at TV360 Nigeria. On Facebook, we're at TV360 Online. And Canada has announced that it will provide an additional $174.8 million to support COVID-19 vaccination needs in lower-income countries. The Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, who disclosed this in a statement, explained that the new fund will aid Canadians' provision for international assistance in response to COVID-19. He added that the fund will help improve the capacity of lower-income countries to distribute vaccines. We'll take a break and return with business updates, so stay with us. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And wait, do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the GoTo app. If you want to know how our Commonwealth is being expended by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by Other People Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, that is true. <laughs> of course, I told you.
opinions are free, facts are sacred, the truth is universal. How in practical terms can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? The president must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places, um, the Lake Chad region, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa forest. On Digi360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts, and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. A new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for go any governor to look for grant for ranching. Digi360, dissecting the issues. Welcome back. It's time for business news in stock market review with Folashadi Ogonride. Folashadi, over to you. For many thanks, Mary. And in business, the International Monetary Fund has warned that Nigeria and 72 other countries at high risk of debt distress are already in debt distress. In a report released by the IMF, low income countries face fewer debt challenges today than they did 25 years ago. The global lending body for the review that debt ratios were lower than in the mid 1990s. However, the debts have been creeping up for the past decade and the changing composition of creditors would make restructuring more complex. I'll well, take a breather here and return with a review of the stock market to stay with us. About 47 billion naira was added to the NGX as the stock market closed this week with three days of down trading and two days of gains to the last trading day of the week, closing with the bull in charge at 0.19% still at the 46,000 level. Now we see that um, 28 equities led by Adova and Mayer led the gainers counter with 1 Naira, 15 cover gains. While recording losses at the close of trading and making a surprise entry with Syria Lex top the losers counter, as well as CWG and 16 other losers. A look at the activity chart sees that um, 154 million volume of shares valued at 1.75 billion Naira exchange hands and 4,000 515 deals now switching over now to some selected global stocks the bull is showing off in the uk us and asia as all stocks are currently trading up analysis show that all these gains are based on the news that mining shares moved higher reaching its best level in two months now from this table we can see that fit is in the greens at 1.50 percent dow jones is also in the greens at 0.59 percent and nikkei is also in the greens at 0.73 percent that's the stock market report. Back to you, Mary, for the rest of the news. Well, thank you for that update, for Shade. And now on the global scene, the European Union has accused Russia of a deadly attack on a train station in eastern Ukraine on Friday. The attack occurred at the European Commission. President Ursula von der Leyen headed to Kyiv. The rocket attack killed at least 35 people and denied a major escape route for civilians. EU Council Chief Charles Michal, who described the attack as horrifying, added that action is needed. Well, up next is Entertainment Report. Inkblot Productions, in collaboration with Film One Entertainment, has unveiled the official trailer for its latest release, Blood Covenant, ahead of its theatrical debut. The movie, directed by Finny Gambo, written by Chia Maka Osago, follows the life of three ambitious young men in their late twenties struggling to make it in life. Tired of being looked down upon, they embarked on a relentless quest for the high life, no matter what it costs them. The Blood Covenant, featuring Toby Bakre, Sean Fakua, Alex Kubo, Omaru Midada, and others, with debut in cinemas from April 15, 2022. 
Nigerian actress Ada Carl has called out her colleague Tonto DK over alleged unpaid debt of 80,000 naira from 15 years ago. Carl, on her Instagram page, berates DK after gifting diamonds to her former boyfriend despite owing her for several years. She also claims she has sponsored Tonto DK's entry into the film industry but had received no return on her investment. Carl, who is also a TV host, says she would be collecting 8 million naira instead of the 80,000 naira, adding that the amount has appreciated in value. That's all we have for you on the entertainment segment of News Now. And now in sports, the president of the Nigeria Football Federation, Amaji Pinnick, has come under sustained pressure from Nigeria football stakeholders who want him to resign immediately from his office. This comes following the recent failure of Nigeria's senior national football team, the Super Eagles, to qualify for the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar. The three-time African champions drew one all with the Black Stars of Ghana in the return leg of the final round qualifiers for this year's World Cup and were eliminated on the away goal rule. Now that's the size of our news bulletin. Many thanks for watching. I am Mary Kanu.